Hey everybody, uh, back once again. I hope everybody's uh, doing their part, staying healthy. Uh, still pretty crazy times out here, like I said before. Uh, I think we're going on to like week three here and uh, of being on uh, kind of like a lockdown, non-essential employees, staying home. Uh, I haven't fished since the end of February. It's uh, been a personal choice just because some of my rivers around my area that I really like to go to have a tendency to get a lot of people anyway um, and I'm playing teacher dad and all that other good stuff so uh, I'm thankful that I'm healthy I get to spend a lot of time with my family um, fish will always be there uh, hopefully I get to sneak out soon things are starting to heat up a bit maybe get even get in the boat with my kids and the wife that's the plan uh, it's early morning having my coffee hope you're doing the same thing I'm gonna do another bug today uh, I've got some other streamers. I know you streamer guys out there predominantly want me to do more streamers. I will. Uh, I, I promise. Uh, the popper that I did in the live feed for the American Museum of Fly Fishing last week, I plan on shooting that this week and getting that out there with some of the other questions that go along with it. And uh, I will detail a lot of the process on painting popper heads and stuff like that in there as well. Because <clears throat> I really didn't get a chance to kind of go over that visually for you guys. But today what we're going to tie is... Uh, going back on that Hendrickson theme, because I know a lot of you are starting to experience these, especially in Pennsylvania, New Jersey area. They're probably just starting on the lower end of some of the rivers around me, too, and working their way up. But is I'm actually going to tie this little Hendrickson soft tackle. It's a pretty simple pattern. You're going to see some similar techniques that we used in the nymph pattern that we tied last time um, with some subtractions and additions to certain things. Um, wet flies are a ton of fun. I, this is a pattern that I typically like to fish pre-emergence and through an emergence. You can even fish it as a cripple or even during a spinner fall. I've had luck with these as well. I think wet flies are very overlooked from a lot of new age anglers. I think they just, ah, whatever, I'm not going to fish those. Um, they're just basically, a lot of wet fly patterns are it kind of falls in the same realm as some streamer patterns. You know, you've got like a basic um, silhouette and a body type that you're trying to convey. They're nondescript. They could replicate a lot of different food forms, whether it's the nymph, an emerging nymph, um, a crippled emerger, and like I said, even a sunk spinner. So the style that I'm going to tie today is one of your basic ones. I've got a whole pile of other types of bugs and stuff that I want to put out there and show you guys. And like I said before, some, some of my own designs, some of, some little tweaks of some other modern designs or older designs. But wet flies are a lot of fun. I love fishing these because the takes on these are, can be extremely violent. Um, whether you're dead drifting them or you're swinging them across a, a water column or even trying to like, you know, you can manipulate them a little bit, give them some movement. It's a lot of fun. When the fish move up into the heads of the riffles and the runs as these bugs get active, and they're just garbage feeding on these, you know, nymphs as they're rolling up through the uh, different layers of the drift. Wet flies can be highly effective and super, super fun to fish. So I'm going to show you the style of the Hendrickson nymph or wet fly um, soft tackle that I like to tie, and I'll talk about why I use some of the materials in it um, for its durability. All right, let's have some fun. Okay, everybody. So here we go. We're going to start with a Airx. FW561 Freshwater Barbless Nymph Hook. Uh, it says 12, but this is actually a 14. I'm going to put some 0 .010 uh, lead wire on the hook just to give it a little bit of weight. Put a little drop of uh, crazy glue on there. Once I've got that in place, I'm going to start wrapping my lead wire. Same steps as you saw in the Hendrickson Nymph. There's some a lot of similarities in the style of how this is tied compared to that nymph. So this is going to look kind of familiar if you watched the last video. Once I've kind of wrapped that where the tag end is, I'm going to take a pair of flat pliers. A little bit of pressure close to the hook, more pressure farther away, and that's just going to help me build a little taper. And just pull that little tag end off. Once I've kind of got that in place, I'm going to get my brown thread. I'm using 8 dot brown vivas today for this. Just start by wrapping a thread base. Go right over that wire. Work our way towards the rear. 
clip our tag end. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some Brahma hen. This is going to be for my tail. I'm also going to use this for my collar. So you can pretty much prep two feathers now. So I'm going to take one and I'm just going to kind of preen those fibers down. Find a relatively generous clump. Probably about, I don't know, 8 to 10 fibers. I like the Brahma hen because it holds up a heck of a lot better than partridge does. I don't have to worry about my tails or my collar breaking off. Once I measure it to the length of the hook, I'm just going to transfer it and then wrap over the butt ends. And you'll see I'm going right in um, to where the bend of the hook kind of starts. Don't be too uh, shy on making the tail a little bit longer either. So not gonna, you know, change the effectiveness of the fly. We're gonna get some brassy sized amber wire. Cut yourself a section of that. We're gonna tie this in. This is gonna be our rib. Try and tie that in on the underside of the hook if you can. Just wrap over all of that wire, build up a little bit of taper. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to dub our abdomen section. We're going to be using the same exact dubbing that we used for the nymph, which is the uh, dark brown spectrumized dubbing from Delaware River Club. And we're just going to build a nice little tapered noodle. As you see here, make it kind of thin towards the rear and then we're just gonna spiral wrap our dubbing to about the two-thirds point what we're not gonna do with this fly is we don't need a wing case for this so um, this is pretty much tied in the round like most wet flies are if you got any air fibers like I have here just kind of clip them out of place and we're gonna wrap our wire Nice even wraps through there. It should take about four turns. Then we'll tie it off. Three turns over the top of it. A couple in front. And then just put your fingernail or your thumbnail right on there. And move that wire back and forth. And that'll give you a nice clean break. And then I'm going to put a half hitch on there. Because we're going to do a, um, a little dubbing loop. It's a dubbing twist that I have. Um, to make our thoracic region. The loop on this doesn't have to be long either. Literally an inch and a half will cover it. And the key to doing this is, you know, I always say this, I can't say it enough, less is more. If you overdub this, and you'll see that's about as much as you need right there. And that's even a little bit too much. I can pull some of it out. Um, then you're going to spin your dubbing twister. If you put too much on here, it's going to, you know, overdress the fly. Then I take a piece of Velcro and I'm just going to kind of brush that out. And you see I've kind of thinned it out but made it a little buggy. And then I'm just going to kind of wrap it and kind of pull some of those fibers rearward as I go. And I go right up to just short of the eye. A couple turns over, a couple in front. Clip it off. And you'll see this stuff is like Real staticky, real buggy-like. So put a half hitch on there. Try and clip away some stuff from your eye. <clears throat> I'll show you a little tip at the end here um, for clearing your eye out if you overcrowd it. So find yourself a Brahma hen feather. That's roughly the right length that you're going to need for the legs and the collar. We're going to strip away the bottom section of it, and we're actually going to pull away the fibers from one side. One mistake that a lot of people make when they do soft tackles is they try to wrap an entire feather on there and then you have way too many um, legs for your collar. So that's all you need there. This is one way you can tie it in. A lot of people will tie these in first and let it hang off the front of the hook and then tie, but it kind of gets in your way. You can do the same thing with the step that I'm doing here where you tie this in at the end. Make sure you clip this off. You can kind of see I missed a couple um, as I go because I'm tired. Um, <clears throat> but I'll show you how you can clear that out, and I did that kind of on purpose. So, once we get to the end, because I know this gives people fits, I get questions on this all the time. Then you're just going to take that, and you, and you can use a, you know, uh, hackle pliers if you want, but I just grab the stem, and I'm just going to take literally like two turns, and as I go, I kind of pull those fibers apart so that they're not stuck together. You, the tip to this is you want to make sure that you are 
your collar, that tips of your collar kind of, when they fold back, they bleed back into the, close to the tail, or where the tail begins to start on your fly. <clears throat> Once you've kind of done that, we're just going to tie this off, build a neat little thread head. Um, these are kind of those types of flies that are really, you know, loose and buggy looking. You can use them for a multitude of different things, you know, like I said earlier in the video, they can be, you know, a sunk spinner, they can be an emerging nymph, they can be an emerging mayfly, etc, etc. Um, so don't be super, super concerned about, you know, how perfect it looks. What I do like to do, though, because there's nothing that drives me crazier is on a wet fly, I mean, you can really make a nice, neat head. You can kind of see I'm using the vise with my thumb to kind of hold that resin in place. Once I've done that, I've cleared it off. Now, you can see I've purposely left a little bit of material that's still kind of crowding the eye. Like I said, I've gotten his question numerous times on it. So this is a cauterizing tool. You can use this to kind of burn that stuff right out. Don't do it prior to putting resin on there, though, however. If you do that, you're going to light your thread wraps on fire, and then the whole fly is going to come apart. See, this is too big. So what I'll typically use is just the tip of my bodkin, and I can clear that eye out if you have any issues. This is one that's going to go in my box, but if I was going to tie these for somebody else, I would be extra super careful about crowding the eye and making sure that that thread head looks good. And that's it. That's a little soft tackle. Remember, a collar, less is more. Same thing with the abdomen. Super, super simple. These things are deadly pre-hatch and during an emergence. Enjoy.